Aloha. You're listening to Sandcast Beach Volleyball with Triborn, me, and Travis Mwerder. And uh, this week on the Sandcast, we have a guest that is from out of town. He's from the Netherlands, and he's not a player, but he is a tour promoter. His name is Wilco Nijland. I think that's how you say his last name. And uh, he is the creator of King of the Court, a tour that many of you have probably heard of, maybe haven't been able to watch yet, but it's uh, this new style of volleyball. It's the King of the Court style of volleyball where one team is on one side of the net, that's the king side, and four other teams are on the other side, all fighting to get to the king side of the court. You can only score on the king side, and it's every round throughout the tournament, a, a few teams get eliminated, and then at the end, you have a final with five teams, and whoever has the most points at the end wins. There's also a clock going, and it's a very entertaining style of volleyball. If you want to check it out, uh, you can check out their website, and you can check out a bunch of stuff on YouTube um, from the tour this year. But this week, we have Wilco, and I hope you enjoy. Good, good to hear you guys. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? I'm fine. Thank you. Good. We're uh, we were we, scrambling a little bit. Try try reminded uh, try, try reminded me like five minutes ago that we had daylight savings time and, and you guys didn't. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, I, I totally <laughs> forgot. <laughs> so, so you we're were, uh, we're in you our were, you were rushing. Okay, yeah, a um, little bit, but we're we're fine. Okay, perfect. Yeah, luckily the timing worked out either way. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. So you're how's you're, uh. Yeah, how's how's Europe Europe treating you? You guys still staying busy? Actually, um, uh, this week I got the feeling that finally I'm I, I can relax a little bit at the office. All oh, right, you got a vacation, right? Yeah, I got a vacation two weeks ago, and um, and now we are in a kind of phase in between the previous tour and the next tour. Um, so that's that's good to have a little bit more relaxing time. And um, now um, autumn is starting over here, so I don't I don't like the rain too much. So I prefer uh-huh. uh, prefer the sun. But uh, it's okay; we have to deal with it. So. Right. Nice. Glad you got to relax. But then, but then I then I see your car with your surfboard, and then I <laughs> uh, want to unfollow you on Instagram. <laughs> Yeah, it's been pretty nice out here. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good for you. Yeah. yeah, it's all good. And also, um, the results on the tour are also good, huh? Yeah, I know. We've uh, got got better each tournament. So we're, uh, we've got some momentum going into Olympic quali- or the rest of Olympic qualification. So I'm happy about that. And are you coming to, uh, to Holland in the beginning of January then? I think so. I, I'm I'm gonna plan it out like this week uh, officially, like try to figure out what the plan is. But yeah, I, I, I'm assuming I'll be there. Who's making your schedule? Um, me. <laughs> <laughs> Yourself. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have to I have to work on putting together uh, my team and getting my coach, and then I have to figure out what they want and all that. But right now, we don't have a coach, or so. Uh, I'm starting to work on it. I took a few weeks off, and now it's back to planning stages. Yeah, because um, I think last week I spoke with uh, Angelo Squale from the FIVB, who is responsible for the World Tour calendar. Yeah. And I think there will be a couple of changes only in June, and um, all the other tournaments are are set for for the period from, from May till till September so it will be a, a busy international tour yeah exactly I know it's going to be super busy that's why I'm trying to rest now and not get too excited and play too early because it's going to be very busy yeah so uh, or maybe um, uh, you can also lose some points right if you have not a very good uh, result in, uh, in, yeah, exactly. in the beginning of the year but yeah then you have Fort Lauderdale and everybody wants to be in Fort Lauderdale right yeah, that's a big one, especially for us since it's local. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's a lot of, of choices, right? A lot of choices. <laughs> exactly. I got to figure my stuff out, but it's gonna <laughs> be busy uh, either way. 
Um, but yeah. yeah. Good luck. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. I appreciate it. I appreciate that. We appreciate you coming on and taking the time to talk to us too. I'm sure that this has been a, a pretty busy <laughs> couple months for you. Yeah, it was extremely busy because uh, before the King of the Court events, we also have um, our uh, Dutch tour with 10 stops and the Dutch National Championships. So um, it was around um, 15 tournaments in a row. So Oof. that was... Um, that was a lot and of course it was the first time of King of the Court so there's also some pressure and um, the world is uh, the world was watching us so yeah it was uh, it was it was sometimes very happy but uh, the rest was very good so at the end then you are they were very very satisfied yeah I was gonna say we're seeing a lot of new developments in beach volleyball which is really fun it, it, it looked like the King of the Court just from everything I saw was pretty smooth and for i mean for a, a first year having four events on it looked like all the events were went really really well was it would you say pretty successful yeah for sure it was it was really pretty successful uh each tournament got something different like uh, the tournament in utrecht was was the first tournament ever and the location was really really great um it fits perfectly into our um our thoughts uh, where to organize events like this, like in a city center, in an urban environment. Um, but the level of the game was not that high. And then we got Antwerp, where the location was not that good, but the level was uh, the level of the game was very high. For Hawaii, it was good to add Hawaii to our tour list, but it was not that good that we have to um, fit into the schedule of the AVP, uh, the stadium of the AVP, and also the schedule because on Friday it was not the best day to to have the event. Right. And then and then we finished in Huntington and everything came together over there. So then yeah, then you are very satisfied and and it it, it went also smooth because from the beginning I, I did a test event in 2017 and the players liked the concept already a lot. So. I was very confident about um, the outcome of that. Yeah, we had we had uh, Alex Brower and Robert Musen on the podcast in I think April or May, and they were raving about it, saying how much fun it was. And then I've seen I know a couple stories on the FIVB website. They said it was like the highlight of their year. So yeah, you gotta, correct, <laughs> the, yeah. the players seem to love the format too. I think just because it's. It's like a fun break from the traditional format. Like it's it's <clears> fast paced, ever and it's just it's mostly offense. So every everyone loves that, and especially Brower and Musin who just who side out like ninety <laughs> percent. And it was also a highlight of their event or, or of their season because um, in two thousand seventeen they had completely no results. So <laughs> it was quite easy to have a, have a highlight <laughs> with King of the Court. Yeah, but, uh, right. no, but they but they are right. It's like it's something. So extremely fast, and um, if you, if you take a look uh, in the stadium, um, you ha- you are sitting there for five minutes, and you already saw three amazing rallies going on. So that's completely different from from the normal beach volleyball, which is also a lot of lot of fun, and everybody likes it. But this is some 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 next level thing, I I, uh, I guess. Yeah, I think it's 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 engaging the entire time. So like you said, the fans are getting to watch three points in the time that they'd normally watch one, but you're also like thinking the whole time, like strategically, what, what should this team be doing? What are they trying to do? And you're looking at the, constantly looking at the score so that fans are engaged the entire time. And as a player, it's, it's nice because you're being challenged to think strategically um, in different ways that you're never challenge to do and and yeah same thing when you're off the court you're like okay who's gonna block who are we matched up against what's the time how much points do we have you know it's it's really fun actually and and yeah like travis said before it's a different type of pressure kind of you know like we want pressure we want fans we want pressure we want to play for big stakes but when it's always the same thing it gets a little I, i think it can get repetitive and boring you know so for us to be able to play at the end of the year where it's still really high stakes and we play against the very top players in the world, but we get to like take chances and have fun. And it's not for our uh, Olympic bid and our FIVB points. It's just to challenge yourself and uh, try to, to compete in this tour against the best players in the world. And 
I, I certainly love it as a, a side tour. Yeah, I can imagine that. And and the thing I want to add on on that thing is that a kind of extra element, an extra dimension is is the clock. Like last five minutes, uh, you see the players only uh, looking at the, at the clock. Like, how many points do we have? How many minutes um, are, are left? How many chances are there for us on the winner's side? How to come on the winner's side? How to stay on the winner's side? And yep. I, uh, I don't know if, if the two of you saw the final of Antwerp, but that was really, for me, one of the best beach volleyball moments I ever saw in my life. Um, because it was like, uh, I think, oh, yeah, Sora, yeah, yeah. They, they, they had uh, 12 points and Brouwer and Stoyanovski only one and Bruno and Pedro zero. Right. So there were se- seven, seven minutes to play. And then at the end, um, uh, Moll and Sorum, they were, were not able to score any points anymore. Um, and then the other, the other two, two teams came very close to them. And then Bruno Pedro... Uh, won against them with, with 14, 13 points and it was because of time it, it could be better if they reached uh, 15 points uh, two rallies earlier but then Pedro missed his match point but that then it was really the best uh, the best moment of, uh, of beach volleyball I ever saw but that pressure and also the feeling of the audience in, in the stadium of Antwerp was that they really saw something unique over there and that, that gave me a lot of courage uh, for the rest of, uh, of the tour. Yeah, no, I remember seeing the highlights from that, uh, that final. And, I mean, you could see the emotion on a guy like Bruno who has already won everything and he's, already, he's coming off Olympics. And, honestly, he doesn't look like he's enjoying the game as much as he, he used to. But in that moment, you could see how happy he and Pedro were. Uh, and, yeah, it was, it's just, uh, yeah, has the... The fans on the edge of their seats. It's really cool. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Another aspect that I kind of like too is that, you know, there's side, there's like side things you can win. Like Trevor and I, uh, we got eliminated first in the final round in Huntington, but we won the uh, longest stay. And uh, it's just cool. Like you can fight for other things where you're like, Okay, normally I, we'd want to rest, but we're getting close to longest stay. So do we do, do we use our energy to try to get that, or do we re- save it? And you have to decide all these things. And and you can not win the whole tournament, but you can win the longest stay, which you get a bonus, and you get to go go up and collect your award after. And I think it's really cool. Yeah, I think it's also nice that you have some some other prizes to uh, to play for. Uh, but at the end, it must be um, very important that you want to become the king. Um, of course. So, so I, so I don't think we will add a lot of side, side events for for prizes. But mm-hmm. um, um, a couple of them, some extras. Yeah, I think that's um, uh, that's nice. And now we also did the MVP of of each tournament, right. which was which was not really the MVP of of a person uh, inside the game, but, mm-hmm. but, but more a kind of going to over, overall uh, achievement um, based on, 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 on King of the Court, like what, what kind of players uh, or actually what players were adding to our concepts. Right. I think that was, that was something what uh, was, was really appreciated by the players as well. So we will, we will keep that one as well. Yeah. yeah, I think that was really cool how, how it wasn't necessarily the stereotypical MVP, but you gave it uh, in Huntington, you gave it to Alex Brower because of the impact that he had on the sport, on the tour uh, yeah, or, from or the that beginning, specific actually. tournament. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So I, yeah. Thought that was, I thought that was pretty cool too. And it, and it tells the players like that their efforts outside of the court to grow the sport and, and uh, your tour specifically are are not going gone unseen, you know. Anyone can just show, or I mean, a lot of people can show up and not do anything off the court, um, but still win MVP. But to have that in the players' heads, like, oh, we have, you know, we have to really contribute to this tour uh, in order to reap all the rewards. Is I think that's a good idea. Yeah, because uh, Alexander Brau, he was eliminated in the first round in Huntington. It was right. really a shame, but uh, but they were. Um, and he, he also feel a little bit embarrassed 
that he that that he received uh, the MVP award on that tournament. <laughs> um, but but you, you you could see the results what he had with with two different players um, and also the effort what what he was uh, putting into into our concept like already one and a half year ago he was our first ambassador together with Robert Mielsen. He they arranged also other players um, yeah. uh, for me to be part of the pilot event. Um, and and even one week or maybe three days before uh, the first event in Utrecht of, of 2018 tour, um, it came out that Robert Mielsen could not play and uh, he arranged by himself um, to ask uh, Oleg uh, Stolinovsky to, uh, to yeah. play with him. Uh, he paid his ticket, uh, arranged everything for him and um, <laughs> they had a very, very good collaboration on the court. It was... Actually, it was for me very, very good to see a Russian guy playing with a Dutch guy, not mm -hmm. because of those nationalities, but two nationalities in a team gives new dimensions. And you saw right. the same in, in Huntington when, unfortunately, Marco Kratiger um, had an injury and I decided that uh, Nico Baylor sh could ask for, for another uh, another teammate and he and he chose uh, Robert Mielsen. And also... That combination uh, worked out very, very well. While those guys never played before, so that's that's also something um, what was already in our minds from the beginning. But due to the Olympic qualification, players told us, "No, we want to play with our um, our normal uh, normal teammate because then we think we can earn the most money and uh, maybe prepare better for the Olympic qualification uh, starts." Right. While well, I, I had the opinion, come on, just uh, practice uh, in the morning together with your normal partner and in the evening you play a tournament um, with somebody else. It, it yeah. doesn't matter at all. So that's huh. something what, what will be new maybe for 2019 that we can give players that opportunity. If, if they want to play with somebody else, uh, why not? It's good for us. We're going to pause real quick for a word from our sponsors who keep the show moving. We are incredibly grateful for all of our sponsors and all of you, the listeners, who keep the show moving and keep moving us forward. We couldn't do it without you. Um, and now it's it's nuts that how fast the AVP season went by. But since it is over now, it is probably time that you re-upped on your volleyballs. I know that mine have turned to a kind of brownish yellow color. So I know it's time for me to re-up on my volleyballs. I'm sure it is time for you too as well. So go to wilsonvolleyball.com. Use the discount code WILSONSAN to get 20% off of all purchases at wilsonvolleyball.com. This show is also brought to you, as always, by our guys at VolleyballMag.com. They are your daily digital news source for all things volleyball. They got indoor covered. They got beach covered, whether it's from Stad to Hermosa Beach. Ed Chan has the best pictures in the game. Lee Feinswag has the most insightful interviews. Every now and then, I contribute something that might be worthless, might be worthwhile reading. I'm not sure, but if you're looking for volleyball news, make sure to go to VolleyballMag.com, your daily digital news source for all things volleyball. We would also like to welcome Volley Camp Hermosa as a new sponsor of the show. If you're listening, you've probably heard of Volley Camp Hermosa. It is the place to go to get better at beach volleyball. Whether you are planning a trip to Hermosa Beach, California, the mecca of beach volleyball, or live locally, they have professional coaches to take your game to the next level. For those making the beach volleyball pilgrimage, they offer week-long adult training camps that are the complete beach volleyball experience. If you live locally or you can't join a camp, you can take their weekly classes and or private training. All levels are welcome, from A to AAA to open. Sign up online at www.volleycamphermosa.com. I'll say that one more time, www.volleycamphermosa.com. Or for more information, you can just give them a call. It is 234-PLAY-VCH. Or you can email them. Info at volleycamphermosa.com. We will see you guys on the sand. And, of course, we always love our sponsors at PacificCoastWealthManagement.com because if your financial plan goes beyond making it into the main draw of an AVP volleyball tournament, check out our online planning tool at PacificCoastWealthManagement.com. We all know that you beach volleyball players need to put that oodles of prize money somewhere. You might as well start it with Pacific Coast Wealth Management. 
So when you get to the site, click on their link, build your financial plan here, and work with a licensed fiduciary advisor who can discuss everything from 401ks, IRAs, life insurance, estate plans, tax strategy, social security, investments, or good old stock tips, also known as a lot of stuff that beach volleyball players genuinely don't know a whole lot about, which is why we need the help with our guys at Pacific Coast Wealth Management. Business owners who need to offer benefits, retirement, or pension plans for their their employees, partners, or themselves, you can give them a call too. Or 529 College Savings or Roth IRA for your kids. Did you know that you can give $15,000 a year to your kid? I know when I was a kid, I wouldn't have minded that. Start with your favorite volleyball player by connecting with us at Pacific Coast Wealth Management on Instagram or www.pacificcoastwealthmanagement.com or you can give them a call, 949-637-7052. Again, that is 949-637-7052. A lot of the listeners of the show are professional athletes, and as we all know, you cannot have enough recovery, which is why the show is also brought to you by our good friends at FireflyRecovery.com. So what Firefly Recovery is, it is a wearable device that simulates blood flow throughout the damaged or sore or afflicted area, say a knee. And what you do, you just strap it on and it helps you recover much faster. So when you are on that 12-hour flight to Stad or a 36-hour trip to South Africa, you can put this on and you're not going to get that super sore, kind of swollen feeling that you get after you fly on planes. Actually, you can make your plane, you can make your trip productive by putting on Firefly Recovery, helping heal up that area, getting off, and you're going to be playing the best volleyball of your life. So give them a visit at fireflyrecovery.com. Let us know what you think. And use the discount code SANDCAST in all caps for a 10% off. All right, that is SANDCAST, all caps, for 10% off at fireflyrecovery.com. And now, back to the show. Wow, that, yeah, that's a great idea. I think that'd be very entertaining. Yeah, it's, I, I mean, I see the perspective of the players, obviously, where we want to get as much practice time. And, and it's an opportunity to get better with your teammate playing in a tournament but also like you know you got to enjoy what you're doing out there and have fun and how often do you i mean it's a learning opportunity for me to be able to go play with a brazilian or a a european player or team uh they play different styles and they're coached different ways so we can really pick up different tendencies and, and learn new things i think that'd be really cool and um, you are used to to the, to the sets of your partner, for instance. Right. But maybe maybe if you play with somebody else, you can you can get some new insights about um, really how how you want to have your sets. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Like 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 Robert Mielsen was uh, was joking that he said, "Ah, oh, finally, I, I play with a guy who can give me a real set." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course, it was a joke. No, but um, there, there, there was something with um, Alexander Samoylos and uh, Martin Plavins. They used to play together, and now they play together again uh, for, right. for, for for this tour because um, the teammate of uh, Samoylos Smedes was injured. Yeah. Um, and then he said, um, "I became a better attacker because um, I know that uh, I, I don't get the bump set all the time." Um, I, I think it's something something good to um, to have some experiences with um, with with a different type of player next to you. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I'm I'm uh, I look forward to maybe uh, trying that out next year. We'll go one yeah, we'll uh, see. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, super the is there. Yeah. I was like, one thing that I'm super curious about is. I mean, where do you find where do you find the time to start a whole new tour? Because Sportworks also runs the the Dutch Beach Volleyball Tour and the Dutch National Championship, and you also train uh, a couple Dutch teams as well, right? Sophie Van Gestel and Marlos Wesseling. Yeah, that was only um, only for uh, for the European uh, Championships. Okay, so you're, you're uh, because busy uh, the girls they, they played in the Dutch Tour, they were both retired, and they want. Uh, they won the wild card for the European Championships, and um, I, I said to them, um, "Who will be your coach?" Because um, I I know those those, those two girls quite well, um, and then they said, "If, if you can uh, can help us out," and I said, "Yeah, of course." So so during during that only during uh, the European Championships it was uh, it cost some of uh, some of our or actually my time, but it was not that much. 
um, and during the season, I'm, I'm not I'm not coaching or, or training them. Okay. Um, because otherwise, it would be too much. Um, but yes, uh, did, yeah, this this tour and the preparation um, was in total one and a half year. Um, and then finally, finally, you can start, and then you have uh, the good results. And uh, of course, there are things um, going wrong on, on tours like that. But at the end, as you said before, it went very smooth, and we succeeded in adding a different kind of uh, beach volleyball format in um, in the beach volleyball world, and very success successful because the players liked it a lot, the fans liked it a lot. The FIVB is very enthusiastic. We have some good partners, so. Yeah, we can be proud on on our team, and I'm I'm very proud on the team and on the the, the possibilities um, we've got. Yeah, you mentioned that it took it was a year and a half of preparation for King of the Court. What did some of that preparation look like? Like, what is the first step you take? Because you're not just launching a new tour, like you mentioned. It's, this is a whole new style. So, I, I mean, I'm sure that it took some work to get the FIVB on board, and then you had to get your partners, which are, and I'm probably going to butcher the pronunciations here, uh, Juiced Bellart and Rolf Bishma. Yeah, yeah. Rolf Bishma and Joost Bellart. Yeah, the pronunciation was very well. <laughs> Yeah, and the, the first thing um, was that I've got the idea to uh, to play King of the Court uh, in combination with the Formula One qualification, like different rounds. And after each round um, in Formula One uh, racing, uh, a couple of drivers um, will be eliminated. And now I thought every round one team will be eliminated. Um, then I've got something in mind, and then I'm going to test it with my with, with, with my friends. Actually, I've got my uh, um, uh, during that time I've got my own indoor sport facility in the Netherlands with indoor beach volleyball courts. So we were just uh, practicing and checking about my basic rules what I uh, developed, and then I changed a little bit, um, and then I contacted uh, my friends of the um, uh, the volleyball federation and. Um, uh, Alexander Brouwer, Robert Meusen, and also their coach, Ayas Ronas. And I said, I, I want to have a, a kind of test uh, test event with the best uh, Dutch beach volleyball teams. So I sent them the rules I created, and uh, and we did a test event. And um, there was there was one one thing what came out of that event, and it, that was very good to know. First, I had that each round uh, will be on time. So the first round, 20 minutes with five teams. The second round, 16 minutes with four teams. And then I said, we, um, we play again um, uh, 12 minutes with three teams in the final round. But then after six minutes play, there was one team. Uh, they, they've got already uh, 18 points. And the other two teams, five and three. And then I know we, we don't have to um, play on time in the last round because... That, that's, that's not um, uh, excited anymore because then the audience could know the winner after after six minutes and then we have to wait for another six minutes. Let's go like, then the energy is going down. So on that test event, I created something new where I said, no, it's not only on time, it is on time, but if you reach 15 points first, then there is a winner. And and those are those are the steps all the time. Then you are setting the rules, then you organize the test event uh, for real with, um, with with five international teams, um, and then you then you then you check how the audience is reacting and what the players uh, think about the concept. And during that moment onwards, that was in June 2017, uh, we already had the uh, FIVB on board, uh, and I, I mean with on board that they were interested in the concept. And a week before that. The test event, uh, the company Sportworks with um, uh, Rulof Belsma, the investor, and Joost Bellard, you just mentioned them, they contacted me and said, um, we want to buy your company and the concept and we want to bring it to a next level. And then that, that ball is starting, starting to roll as well and then everything is going very, very quick. It seems, it seems like it. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like it hit the ground yeah. running. <laughs> Yeah, because because after because after that, um, then the first thing what you have to do, and that's quite special, um, 
and then moment onwards, Sportworks uh, is the owner of the concept of King of the Court. Um, and I mean with the concept, not King of the Court, as we all know, as a training, as a training exercise, but the concept with um, um, with the rules and the time and the different rounds. What I created. And then, then you go to the FIVB and, and then we tell the FIVB we want to organize this with the best players of the world. And then the FIVB said, uh, yeah, but if you want to organize that, then you have to give it to us first. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, so we give it for free to you and then. And then they said, then we give you the license for the next seven years to be the sole organizer um, of King of the Court with the best teams of the world. And we don't wow. have to pay. We don't have to pay for that. Um, but they are now the rights or the, the right owners, and we are the license holders. Ah, I see. I like and that. that. I mean, that's yeah. awesome. I, I love that you guys are, you know, willing to partner up. It seems like there's a lot of um, governing forces in certain parts of beach volleyball right now. But you know, not everyone's always. It's not easy to be willing to give up uh like the rights like you said and the uh, parts of it to, to partner up and, and help each other but that's cool that you were able to do that right away and you guys but not, also but, but not only we um it's like also the fivb right like totally. It, it's a totally. it's a it's a really big compliment to the fivb that they are open for a new kind of beach volleyball uh concept because yeah. normally uh, federations are conservative Right. So they say, ah, test it a couple of years, and then we think uh, maybe we can cooperate. But now they were directly enthusiastic, and that's that's because uh, mainly because of um, their CEO, um, which is um, which is Fabio Acevedo. Um, and and after the confirmation, what we've got from the FIVB, um, then we went directly to the AVP because then we thought um, where to organize the events. Like we really want to start in in the Netherlands, in our home city in Utrecht, which is the fourth the the fourth biggest city of Holland. Um, and then you check the calendar, what you can do. Um, and then we were close with um, with our friends from Belgium, uh, our our neighbor country. So then we have Utrecht and Antwerp. And then we, th then we thought we have to bring that to the United States because they are really beach volleyball uh, minded uh, minded people. The fans are there. Uh, beach volleyball started over there. So what would be the best the best partner to to cooperate? And then via Casey Patterson, I was in contact. Uh, I came in contact with the with the ACP. We arranged the meeting. I think three weeks later, we we were on the on the office talking with um, with Josh, uh, Donald, Al, and Jeff. And it was a conversation of, of maybe one or two hours, and everybody in the room had did um, they had the idea that that this could be something big, and everybody was full um, in energy to make it happen. So it's also that you must have a fit and a good um, and a good feeling with the partners, and that's and that's the thing with the AVP and the FIVB, and that's that that that's unique what you said, but it's also. A compliment to all, to all the parties. Totally, yeah, and that's really uh, it's really nice to see for uh, for a player, especially you know someone one of many people who are trying to make this our full time living and all that to see that the people running it are, are working together and being open minded and being creative and listening to each other and yeah, I, I agree. It's a, it's a big testament to you guys, but also FIVB and AVP to to uh, get on board with it and that i mean that kind of tells me that this maybe this is just the beginning right because i mean you have a lot of people on board and backing uh pretty much all the the top um, governing bodies in the sport or not governing bodies but people in the sport that are they're backing it and supporting your tour i think that's really cool yeah, I think you're right. And um, the other thing, what is also a benefit from for us, as and and as you saw that as a player, um, we are able or I am able to to change the rules every tournament if I want. <laughs> yeah, yep. it, maybe changing changing is not the best word uh, word, but um, making it better. Right. Um, depending, uh, uh, like uh, like like the surf. Um, mm -hmm. First, I 
first I had the rule that um, each missed surf is always a point. And then one month before, before the tournament, we had a kind of last test event. And then the player said to me, um, maybe that's not a good idea to, uh, to count a missed surf. Because then you can... Um, yeah, then you can give each other's points uh, too easy. And I was thinking about that, and I think, yeah, they are right. I have to change that, because otherwise it's not fair enough. And also I thought the final will, will go too quick. Mm-hmm. So, so, so we start to play with those rules in, uh, in Utrecht. Right. Um, and then in, um, in Hawaii, I added the rule that um, um, with three missed serves in a row... Uh, the other team will get a point. Right. And then at the end in Huntington, I I added another rule that in the last 30 seconds, each miss serve will be a point. Not, not only those three in the last two minutes, right. but, uh, but each miss serve. And that's the kind of thing what I saw um, uh, from the perspective of the players, that they, um, they like that a lot. They appreciate that you are uh, making the rules better. Mm-hmm. Um for their advantage because during our flight from from europe to hawaii which was in total i think 16 or 17 hours mm-hmm. um i really spoke eight hours of it maybe maybe nine hours i spoke with players about the rules huh. and and during a flight um it's always good to spend some time and, and know each other better um and and that that's that was one of my goals being open and check with the players um, if if we need to change something, yes or no. And not that I'm that, that that I was listening always to them if they said you have to change it now. But it was something in my head that I thought, oh, maybe we have to do to do something with that rule. Let's let's play for another day and then make the evaluation, something like that, and, and get and get the the feedback from it. Yeah, it's certainly nice from a player's perspective to know that you're i mean you're not going to do everything we say but but to know that you're actually willing to listen and consider things and then and then we see you put it into action right away uh when you take everyone's opinions into consideration and figure out what's best for the sport it it's it's nice from the player's perspective i think and yeah we had plenty of examples uh you know uh like all the ones you you just mentioned where it was just like, hmm, maybe maybe we could change this. And then you came up to us individually or as a group and asked us what our opinions were. A lot of us voiced our opinions. And then next time we met, you're like, okay, we thought about it, and this is the no rule. And everyone was on board, and I thought every rule made the tour uh, or the game even better. And and all the players appreciate appreciated that. Yeah, I think so. And, and sometimes it was... It was very easy for us to change, yeah. Um, we all remember your situation in Hawaii, <laughs> yeah. And we, and that and that was something which never happened before, right? Um, so I I could do nothing than changing that rule. Um, like like for all the listeners, it was it it was a situation that um, the best uh, the best number fourth team. Um, we'll go to the to the semifinals, and um, the the announcer uh, Mark Schurman he he was already announcing the amount of points uh, you had, um, and right. then the players uh, the players said in, I think it was in the last uh, fifty seconds they they gave directly four points in a row to um, to another team. Um, and of course it it, it was it was a a strange situation but at the end I was happy that that it happened Um, of course not not, not because of you and Trevor uh, but it was good (laughs) that the other players who who give the points realized that it was it was an unfair competition and that that you can that you cannot do that anymore Um, Mm. Because um, Sean Rosenthal came to me and said, Wilco, can you please change that rule? Because we didn't ask the other teams to give us points. Um, right. we, we didn't ask uh, to put us in this position. And I said, yeah, you're absolutely right. And then, and then I was uh, walking to the, to the players area. And there, then I saw a couple of players feeling embarrassed what they yeah. just did. And told me, oh, uh, we didn't realize um, I can tell you honestly, in, in the Dutch team, 
they spoke, I think, for 60 to 90 minutes about about this. Yeah, I, I, uh, they were so nice about it. And I think it, it goes to the, it's our player's nature. When we're on the court, we compete. Whatever the rules are, we're going to work within those and and try to not manipulate them, but we're going to use every little thing to our advantage. And and in that situation, it was nobody on the court could lose because Mark obviously announced the score that the lowest team needed to get. So everyone on the court was like, well, we're all in. Why not help these guys that are right here? And it was getting hyped up. And then after, yeah, like, I mean, guys are apologizing to me. I was heated just because, like I said, we get we get into the heat of the moment and we're always there to win. But, um, yeah, I, I think, like, the way you guys dealt with it was just so good. It was, look, there was a mistake. We're here to constantly make the game better and learn from it. So we're glad that it happened. Sorry you were, you know, had the worst end of it for a little bit. But we moved on and the next tournament it was fixed and uh, it was, everything's better from there. Yeah, it's, and it's good, it's good to mention uh, what we fixed. Um, we, then, then, then we played a kind of um, um, playoff uh, between, between those teams just right. for, for, for eight minutes. And then um, uh, the, the three best teams, uh, they will play for one spot in the semifinals. Um, and, that's, and, that, and that's more fair. And there are maybe a couple of small issues in the rules um, which situation could maybe lead to some uh, manipulation. Um, but the good thing, what I thought and what I also saw is um, that you must have everybody on board to make a deal and the score must be there. I don't know if you saw the flocks of, um, of Mol Sorum and the McGibbon brothers, but otherwise yes. that, that, that's a good one to check out the flock because they want, those two teams wants to make a deal. Um, and the deal was they were, they were together in the, in the group. And they right. were, um, I think they were in a, in a very strong group. I think um, Phil and Nick were in that group, and, um, and and two other very good teams. Oh yeah, I think it was Fabius Ver- Bouter, uh, yeah, Gibbons, Mol Sorum, and another one. Um, and then then they thought uh, Mol Sorum, they will get a lot of points, no problem. And then they should they should give uh, the McKibbins some points as well. But what happened after um, 17 minutes play of those 20? Molsorum were still on zero points, scored nothing. Yeah. So they could not give the other team a point because they, they then they will be eliminated themselves. So making deals from the beginning, no, I don't believe in that. Um, and we are working out to make maybe one or two changes in rules uh, to make that as fair as possible. But for now, it was already fair because um, players were sometimes asking or trying to make deals, but on the courts, in the heat of the moment, um, it, it's not that everybody is. Um, if you make uh, if you make a deal, that they will that they will play play that deal. Maybe they will play from themselves and and change it while while the game is all is is, is still playing. So, on the other side, I I like it the, the mental stuff. Can we trust each other? Yes or no? We will see what what happened, but but we are on it actually. So, that's good. Definitely. And one thing that I think, uh, another thing that the players really appreciated was that it felt like uh, we just had such great, you guys had such great hospitality. I mean, you got flown to Hawaii, you put us up at at the nicest hotel uh, and took everyone for surfing lessons and we went out for dinners together and and there's, uh, you know, you had DJs playing uh, at the end of Huntington, you had everyone come down on the court and be together. And I think it's really cool for you guys creating that camaraderie uh, between the players and the tour. And, and it just helps everyone to realize that, you know, we can go have fun as well, you know, and enjoy enjoy ourselves and, and being together. Whereas on the world tour, I think a lot of us get so serious that we're always kind of enemies traveling in groups. And, you know, we don't want to. It, you know we're all friends, but at the end of the day, we're we're trying to beat each other. <laughs> um, but on the <laughs> yeah. on the king of the court tour, we're able to kind of put it aside pretty quickly when we're off the court and and enjoy that um, 
kind of bonding experience with everyone. Yeah, it's one of our, um, and that's and that's one of our basic basic things. What 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 we think what's extremely important: taking care of the players. Like you are you are the artist in the arena. You have to do it for us. Um, so that's then it's extremely important that everybody is satisfied. Um, that's really one of our key values. And it's, it's, it's something what uh, the investor rule of Belsma thinks that's, that's very important. Um, and, and, and you see what's, uh, what's happening. Like um, players are bonding. Um, of course, we had, we had good, good hotels, good food, nice things to do because we also went to, uh, to a baseball match all together but, right. um, or, or to nice restaurants. But the thing is, um, you learn each other, or, or, you, or you get to know each other from an, from another another perspective, another way. Uh, as you said, normally you are, are your competitors. Now you are only competitors on the court, and then af- after the court and, and, and before the game, then then you became became friends and and get to know more from each other. And I was I was very very new in the international beach volleyball world, and from my perspective. I could not imagine that uh, the players were not talking to each other so much. <laughs> I, I, I think it's strange. I really think it's strange. And now putting them together and arrange a kind of social program that, that leads to, to directly making new friends and, and get to know each other. Uh, one of the best examples... Um, and and I, I can tell you that because I spoke with him about it as well, and 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 he, and he was laughing about that a lot. Um, was uh, Martin Plavins from uh, from Latvia? Mm-hmm. He's playing with uh, with Tox, and normally what he is doing on the tournaments, they arrive very late on a the tournament. They they are they only uh, are talking with um, with the Latvian the Latvian other other teams. Um, and when they are eliminated, uh, they go directly uh, home or or to a new to 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 a new tournament, and nobody nobody spoke with the guy before. Mm-hmm. And what what happened over here? It was that it yeah it came out that he was um, uh, the most maybe not the most but one of the most funniest players of the whole tour, <laughs> with a nice sense of humor, very friendly. And then then other other players told me. I didn't know that guy, but but now now we are very very good friends. That that we can create that, um, I'm very happy with it, and we will we will we will really do it for yeah. for, for the next time. And actually, I think that um, and and of course maybe that play, not all the players agree, but I think if you are playing your tournament on uh, your your world tour four star event and you start on Thursday, why not? Give everybody their hotel on Monday. Have a nice, <laughs> have a nice dinner on Monday all together. Starting dinner, then you uh, have have your, um, your your training day on Tuesday, and on Wednesday you have one activity, and on Thursday you start your tournament. Mm-hmm. Now players are telling me, no, 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 that's not professional. I don't think so. I, I don't think it's not about professionalism. It's about um, uh, a way of thinking. In a way of um, um, feeling uh, and playing your sports, like of course I know you must be focused, but with this kind of extra things, maybe that will that will yeah let you make the last step to to win the gold medal uh, or or to understand each other better and being better competitors. But it, right. it's normally normally it's all about money, so. Um, and, and players will say, "No, no. Then I'm then I'm too many days uh, away from my house." Uh, and then I think, "Yeah, maybe, maybe you are. But sometimes you are already on a journey. So <laughs> then you can add a couple of days." But Especially if you're in Hawaii. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> you can't complain. And no, nobody can can complain. No. <laughs> but we will see what happens. But that that's that's one of our things from from our philosophy. Um, and uh, it's 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 up on the other promoters if they want to do it, yes or no. Yeah, I, I mean, I I like it, and I was one of those players too, and I still am. Like, where it's all about professionalism, we have to we have to 
be the best that we possibly can be. So, but I think that we can be open-minded about what that means exactly. Because at the end of the day, if you really think about who we are as athletes, we're we're entertainers, right? We're basically artists and entertainers. We create yeah. our own style of play, and then we go do it and we perform in front of people. We so. I think if you look at it from that perspective as well, you know, there's a lot of stuff off the court that we can be doing and, and creating these partnerships and getting to know new people can only help us if, if you're open minded to it. Like I became much closer with uh, the Norwegians and I mean, almost everyone, actually, like you said, I've become closer with everyone and I got to know their real personalities. But now I have these contacts as well. I can hit up any of those guys that were on the King of the Court tour and I've already talked to a few teams where I'm like, man, one day I'd love to get a off season training group together in Hawaii. You know, if anyone wants to train for hot weather and everyone wants to be in Hawaii and there's so many people that are open to that. And, you know, if I do have them, we're going to be hosting them and, and you want to know that they're good people. So it's, it's cool that we've gotten to know each other like that. And now we get to explore different styles of play. Like we said earlier, now yeah. I get to I get to see what the Norwegians are doing, talk to them about their game, and and uh, vice versa. And maybe I can go do their training in the off season, and it, it's pretty cool. I, I think it's really good, and it's really good for the sport uh, as in terms of just growth. Yeah, I I, I really think that um, getting to know each other better in the end will lead to to better results. And as you said, uh, maybe in your preparation phase of the year, uh, you will have practice uh, practice weeks with with, with other teams, um, which which makes you getting a, a better level. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I think that's the best way. And you and you want to change up your training as well. You know, if you do the same thing all over over time, you're going to start to master that sort of thing. But you need to create new challenges and see different see the game in different ways and i think it's really helpful for us to be in touch with the rest of the world um to be open to learning new stuff yeah yeah yeah. in terms of the number of events was four like a pretty comfortable number for you guys to run are you looking to expand or just stick right there at four events um the goal is to expand uh, for 2019 um, we have to check um, which weekends and which locations are available in the World Tour calendar um, because we are aware of the fact that um, players are, are playing their qualification for the Olympics um, and also the King of the Court event must fit into their schedule. Um, and on the other side, we got um, uh, we got some uh, some 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 budgets to arrange. Uh, of course, we need to find our sponsors. Uh, at the moment, um, uh, the department of Joost Bellart is um, is talking to um, twelve to twenty possible uh, new sponsors. Um, and um, based on that, we can we can determine how many events we're going to organize in 2019, and and where to organize those events. So I think in the next uh, three or four weeks, we uh, we know more about um, uh, yeah, how the how the tour of 2019 uh, will look like. Okay, how how difficult is it? Because you mentioned that you were looking to schedule cooperatively with the FIVB, and then I'm sure that you're probably going to avoid AVP or P1440 dates too. How difficult is it to, to find one of those free weekends? Because the FIVB schedule is just like nonstop. I mean, I think it's what, 46 events next year? Yeah, there are, uh, maybe there are even more. Um, but what, uh, what we agreed with the FIVB is that uh, if there is a one, two, or three-star event, um we can organize a King of the Court tour. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you take a look at the calendar between the 1st of May and the 1st of September, um, it's quite impossible to organize uh, three events. Maybe maybe two events are possible for us. Um, so we have to go to, to other months, uh, maybe in the, um, 
uh, maybe in the month of February, March, April, there are some some possibilities uh, for us. Maybe we can make some combinations with World Tour events. For instance, if you uh, go to China um, in uh, in a certain week of April, that we organize a King of the Court event in another city in China afterwards. Uh, so the players are already there. Uh, the, the same we are we're checking for for September and October. But of course, yeah, we have to cooperate with uh, with the AVP. What um, uh, what what their ideas are and and with the FIVB. So. It's it's quite challenging, um, but I think um, we have some uh, we yeah, we have we have some good options. Yeah. And do you guys uh, do you guys plan on um, switching it up, whether they're double gender events or single gender events? Because we you did a bit of both uh, this past year, right? Yeah, we did uh, Utrecht and Antwerp um, only uh, only male teams, and in Hawaii and Huntington we had a double gender, um, and that was. Um, that was because of it. It was the first year, mm-hmm. so uh, it was also kind of budget uh, budget thing that we start first with um, uh, uh, with, with with the men teams, um, and it was also a kind of um, uh, only only option uh, practical wise because we got only one day in Utrecht and one day in Antwerp. And uh. We want to play everything in one stadium, otherwise we we need more courts. Um, and we didn't want to start at 9 a.m. in the morning, so those are those are some reasons. Um, but for 2019, um, we think it's important to have double gender events, um, and um, and and we um, uh, we we will have that as our goal for for each tournament. Awesome. And uh, one other. thing thing that i i wanted to bring up that i thought was really cool and i want to give you guys credit for is you know obviously me and guys like me and travis uh and a few other people are out there or players are trying to create you know kind of player-based media and uh one thing i actually want to thank you for is is uh creating opportunities for the players to um you know practice being in the media uh, but also like expanding our value as athletes and, and our knowledge were giving us a platform to speak on because you gave me you uh, allowed me and a few other players to do sideline reporting on the live stream and we were able to commentate and broadcast the matches and i think it's cool uh, you know not many players feel like they're ever going to have the opportunity to or feel like they're capable of of uh doing those things you know they think you have that has to be your profession but um i think it's really cool when you give um all the players the opportunity to to speak um to the audience and the fans and and give their perspective because i certainly know that from all the talking i've been doing over the last two years the fans really really appreciate hearing from the players because it's a whole new perspective it's not that same old kind of vanilla uh, stuff that you hear it's it's updated new and then they're able to kind of uh link what they're hearing from the players uh into what they're seeing on the court and and i think that's uh, really cool that you guys are utilizing that aspect of allowing the players to be a part of that yeah i um i i appreciate your words and i and i think you're uh, you're right um and and the good thing behind this story is that um did this happens uh during the tour it was not planned before uh of course uh from from utrecht and antwerp um i had rich lamborn as a as, as a live live stream uh commentator um and i added ryan the number door um next to next to rich and um i had uh malus wesseling as a player to be um uh, the host for, for for the live stream interviews um, but Reiner and Malus, they didn't travel with us to Hawaii and to Huntington. And uh, you and me, we had some talks about it. Um, but then I thought, hey, why not putting each game another player next to Rich? Like mm-hmm. e- every hour another player. And I and I asked the players and some of them, they were directly interested. And also some players, what I thought that they... That, that I, I should never ask. They said, "Yeah, why not?" Um, 
we get also very good uh, comments on the way that um, uh, uh, Melissa uh, Umana Paradis was was doing uh, the, the interviews. Mm-hmm. Everybody loved her enthusiasm, right? Um, and that was that was that was also an eye opener for for herself. She said, "I love I love to do it." So there's also my advice to other promoters, uh, and and what we are going to do is um, add the players to. Uh, to your organization of the tour and um, and they will make it even better because um, I was very very enthusiastic about um, about the thing what we did in Huntington all together yeah for sure yeah I agree totally it's going to be cool to see how it evolves and I can see uh, the excitement uh, in the players just getting the opportunity and they see their peers doing it and they're like oh yeah i want to try to do that plus it gets them exposure which is really important in our sport as well yeah that that that's a very good thing to add um and for the viewers if some of them were were watching for for eight hours in a row uh, the king of the court uh, uh games and then you got every hour another uh, co-commentator which mm-hmm. we, which make it fresh Fresh for uh, for Rich, uh, who 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 is there eight hours in a row, uh, but also <laughs> fresh um, uh, for the viewers. So it's it's a kind of win win situation. I totally agree. Are there are there any big locations that you're that you have in mind that you're looking to expand to? I don't know if there's like a dream spot. Getting one in Hawaii was really cool. Just because there hasn't been an event in Hawaii in a while, I didn't know if you had any other spots where you were just like, I definitely want to go there. Um, yeah, it's always um, a little bit scary to say those things because then you have some goals or some dreams. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but the good thing for me is, um, uh, or also one very, one very, uh, very important thing is that we are organizing King of the Court events um, on an urban location in a city center or on a city beach. Um, and then, of course, um, it's good to add some uh, some big names of big cities in the world. And we, we, we can all mention that, like, of course, you want to play beach volleyball uh, in Paris underneath the Eiffel Tower. Um, <laughs> like, like those iconic locations. Or you want to play in New York when you can see the skyline. Um, and I can... I, I, I can mention 10 of those cities. But the other thing what's in our concept very important is um, that we need to go to, um, to a city um, which wa- really, really wants to have us, where there are a lot of beach volleyball fans, or in that country are a lot of beach volleyball fans, and that we can um, uh, organize it together with a local promoter um, to make it better for, uh, for both of us. So it's not only the iconic, iconic location with, with the iconic, iconic backdrop, backdrop what, uh, what we want, uh, but, it, but yeah, there, is more, uh, there are more important things to, to make an event uh, to become a successful event. How do you so no, uh, no secret uh, spots being revealed yet? Uh, not yet. No, but we're work, we're working on that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sure you'd be uh, rather announce it on your uh, on your channels. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, I, as I said, we are we are now in the phase of uh, preparation 2019. In a couple of weeks, we can um, we can tell more. All right. I'm just praying for Hawaii, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I I can imagine that it was it was great to be there. Yeah, for sure. And I know you mentioned that you wanted to have more events. Is there like a certain number that you think would be too much? Because the, the Dutch <coughs> tour has what is it, 10 stops, you said, and then you had four King of the Courts to organize. So you're putting on at least 14 pretty high level professional events. Um, how high are, are we looking to, to scale this thing? Um, I think that uh, there's a maximum of 10 events. Okay. Um, and there's also a maximum in the calendar um, because uh, it, it, 2019 will be a very, very busy, uh, busy season for for all the players. Um, and um, I, I can give you an example. I spoke with um, Herrera Gafira, for instance. 
and they they want to participate in all events, but maybe but maybe not together as a team, because maybe one of the two players needs a little bit more rest than the other. Right. Um, and then um, I can imagine that um, uh, that that one of those players will play then with uh, with with an, uh, a player from another country to make another combination between maybe a guy from Spain and a guy from the United States. So, so we have to take a look at that as well. It must fit into the calendar and it must fit into the, uh, the schedule of the players. That's important for us to take a look at. Right. And I think because that's what, that's what we're seeing with P1440 right now, too. I don't know how closely you follow the United States uh, beach scene just with the AVP and P1440, but they had to consolidate two events into one just because all the players were looking to have an off season now. And so they're yeah. just like they couldn't get enough people to do both events. So now it's just one in, in Huntington Beach at the uh, end of November, beginning of December. Yeah, I'm, uh, of course, I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm looking very close to all new developments right. in, uh, in, 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 the, in the beach volleyball world. And um, uh, since uh, since last year that we are working close together with the AVP, um, I know um, a lot of uh, the players from the United States. And um, I have a lot of respect for... For, for for your country as um, as a beach volleyball country for many years and and it, and it's it's very hard to to start with a new tour um, we are at the moment uh, not close related to um, uh, to P1440 um, but but we are following them and I think they are following us and uh, maybe we can do something together in the future um, as I said before we are very open to make um, to make a collaboration because for us um, it's very important that the players are satisfied and that the players can can play a very good season and and for me we uh, then we really have to uh, cooperate as good as possible to make it happen because otherwise we are organizing in the same weekend four tournaments and um, and one player can choose for four tournaments. I think that that's not that's not a good idea. Um, but we will see how, how it will happen in the future. Um, but from our side, um, uh, we think that that's very important to um, to cooperate. Yeah, it, you mentioned that you're following all the new developments pretty closely, and obviously so, but it, it's it's fun to watch just the landscape of beach volleyball. It, it seems like it's on like hyper speed right now because we had – it wasn't too long ago that uh, colleges in the United States added beach volleyball, and then that had a trickle-down effect. So now high schools are competing with beach volleyball, and then the AVP is adding events. We had King of the Court jump in, and now you guys are adding events, and then P fourteen forties jumping in. They're adding events, and the FIVB schedule just like tripled out of nowhere. It seems like the, there's there's just opportunities are are pretty abundant right now in the sport in general. It's fun to watch. Uh, yeah, it's fun to watch and uh, compare it to uh, to tennis. Like. Um, each weekend, there are also three or four uh, tennis tournaments um, with different ratings, or different rankings, different amount of stars, as you can compare it to beach volleyball. Um, and I think this is a kind of um, this is a kind of flow where we are now, and maybe in two years, everybody decided that, that less tournaments are good as well. Um, or that we have the the, the year round events because now we now we forget that the FIVB is also adding snow volleyball events uh, <laughs> to the winter. <laughs> I forgot that. Uh, so so yeah, they they are they are uh, developing, and um, for me as a concept developer for the last ten years, I I'm enthusiastic about new developments. But you also have to make. Uh, yeah, really, really good evaluation moments are, are we all on the right track or do we need to change something? Um, and and from from those meetings, you, you learn a lot. But uh, for now, um, let the market go. Let, let everybody do their thing and, and see what happened. And um, I think from, from that perspective, um, when it's still good for the players, um, yeah, it's... It's, it's good for all of us, I think. I agree. I definitely have to agree, and I, uh, 
I mean, we don't want to keep you too long here, but uh, I think, uh, yeah, it's good for the sport. And uh, I think a lot of the players have been asking for more opportunity over the years, and now it's here. So you got, I hope you guys lifted and uh, did your training because there's a lot of volleyball ahead for us and uh, a lot of entertainment for our fans. And uh, we appreciate you uh, being a, a big part of that, Wilco. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, uh, we we are doing this with um, a lot of fun, a lot of joy, and um, and, and really from um, uh, from a good perspective that we that we want to make the beach volleyball world better. So yeah. Now, well, if you ever need anything uh, from us from the Sandcast, uh, we'd love to to help you out and. Um, keep you connected with our fans because I'm sure they're very interested in everything you're doing. So we'll keep them updated and we'll keep having players on that have played on the tour and uh, keep growing the sport. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. It was uh, it was an honor to talk with you. Very, very, very nice. And it's always good to, to talk about beach volleyball and development. So um, if I can do something for you, let me know. Yes, sir. For our listeners, Wilco, where can they follow along updates for King of the Court or SportWorks in general? Do you, uh, are there is there some Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, website, anything for for our listeners to to hop on and follow along? Yeah, I think um, the most important thing is to follow us on uh, on social, um, King of the Court Beach. Um, you, you you can find everything. It's, uh, it's the same on, on, on Facebook, on, on Instagram and Twitter, and um, our website, kingofthecore.com, uh, with all the latest information and news. Perfect. All right. Well, we appreciate, again, you taking so much time out of a crazy busy schedule for you. Uh, appreciate all the work you've done for the sport. It's, uh, it's a blast to, to see all these new developments, and, and it's a blast to watch. The events were, were super fun to watch. Uh, thank you very much. It's a, it's a pleasure. Absolutely. All right, we'll go. Okay, guys. All right, enjoy the rest of your day. Have a good one. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.